Where has the time gone? It's Dreamhack Fall already. Yes, I miss my summer dearly, but I mind a lot less if it means I get to cast great players like these. Everyone has been talking about this up-and-coming Protoss streamer. Wait, he's used his last name as his ID? That's uncanny! But he'll need much more than swagger and an initial pylon to beat this titan of the game. For the rivers don't just run red with blood, they run with scarlet! Our Canadian Zerg player is currently ranked number 27th in the world. Our American Protoss number 116. Let's hope M. Canning's upward trajectory continues or this will not be a fair fight. But if I didn't like our Protoss player before, I love him even more now. He didn't do that cheesy hash block. I wonder if Scarlet can remember the last time she got her natural down at her natural. She's probably been thrown off her game. Now these players have a little bit of a history. In 2016, M. Canning was about to finally qualify for DreamHack for the first time. He was one victory away, and then Scarlet knocked him out. She probably doesn't remember that, but I bet M. Canning does. So far, very standard builds for all. Hatch first for our Zerg, and what looks like it's going to be Nexus before Core for our Protoss. It's giving me that warm, fuzzy feeling. Or maybe that's just because I was dropped on the head one too many times as a baby. Speaking of warm fuzzies, I tend to get them on the map Death Arrow. We get a lot of good games on this map. Oh, M. Canning's using that spray paint feature. There's our core. I don't know how I feel about the sprays in the game. I find them a little bit distracting. But the idea of uh, coded taunting messages is kind of cool. What do people think? Do you like sprays? Let me know in the comments. Or just shout really loud into your monitor, because I'll totally hear you. All right, the natural finishes, as does the pool. It's going to be double queen and two links. Cybercore is just about to complete for the Protoss. Let's see if we get any information from N. Canning. Here comes that core. It's going to be an adept chrono boosted. Overlord's not going to miss that. Scarlet's bringing that Overlord in to see if she can get eyes on M. Canning's tech choice. Should be somewhere around here by this pylon, I would suspect. And it's going to be a Stargate opening. Scarlet's going to go ahead and take a third. She hasn't seen any reason not to. Other than the fact that she just hates Protoss in general. If you're not familiar, Scarlet's been pretty public about the fact that PvZ is not her favorite matchup. Oh, the Adept is staying at home. Maybe he wants to make sure he covers his door until he chrono boosts out that Stalker. Scarlet's main is fully saturated. Her natural's already at half. As usual, she is macroing like a boss. M. Canning starts up the warp gates. And his stalker's not going to guard the door. He's going after the Overlord. Scarlet's already got eyes on that Stargate, though. But if Protoss can drive off that Overlord, he might be able to hide what he's going to build out of it. It's a Phoenix. The Overlord is not in range to see it. But something tells me she's going to figure it out when that Phoenix blows up her Overlord. Meanwhile, Ling Speed just about done for the Zerg. Scarlet is adding additional queens. We're even on workers at this point. Neither side has much of an army. M. Canning's gonna take his frustration out on the unbuildable plates. I mean, seriously, who builds plates that are unbuildable? Why would you do that? Oh, that Overlord is auditioning for the role of First Blood. He's gonna get the part! And maybe he can even get an Oscar for that performance. It's a First Blood, but also a first sighting of the Oracle. Scarlet's not done scouting, though. She's sending out her lings. She hasn't committed to spores just yet. Oh. Never mind, scratch that. One spore in the main. Just one, though. The real focus for Scarlet appears to be drone, drone, drone. And that might be the right call. The Oracle actually hasn't headed out for the Zerg base. But on the other hand, M. Canning is making a second one. M. Canning may be a subscriber to the later but more deadly version of her ass. Regardless, it's going to give Scarlet an opportunity to start up her lair tech. There's no Roach War and no Baneling Nest. M. Canning's gonna take his third. He's gonna do so at the low ground base location. Scarlet has her Ling spies in place to make sure she gets that intel. I just love how active she is on the map with those single Lings. M. Canning sees those Lings with his Oracle, but he doesn't seem to want to use any Oracle juice on them. Whoa! That would be an early Fleet Beacon and a second Stargate. We could be looking at a carrier rush. 
Scarlet is definitely going to want to know about this. But I'm not so sure her email account is set up to give her Google alerts on this. And her Ling scouts aren't going to be able to find this out for her. But did she spot that the Cyber Corps was researching? There's a plus one air attack upgrade underway there. She's got to be thinking, there's some kind of air commitment here, but there's no harass going on. Will the reactionary Zerg put it together? Oh, you can see from the comments there is some kind of lag or tech problem. Fortunately, since we're using a glorious replay, the game weaves back together seamlessly for us. But there was some kind of break there. That might have been in Scarlet's favor. Give her a little bit of time to think about some of the information clues that are out there. And she is making a Hydra Den. You might say she's lucked out. But I think that's instinct and veteran experience. M. Canning's first two carriers are now underway. Man, they look awesome even when they're just under construction. Meanwhile, M. Canning's been trying to sneak his adepts behind enemy lines. He's been weaving his way past all those lings. Scarlet knows they're on the map, but she does not know where. But she'll see the shade once it hits the creep. The lings pick up the trail. A queen is there. But it is a cancel. The adepts are going to try to hide. The lings go hunting. And the oracles! They did show up, and they got a cancel on the fourth. Well, now M. Canning's glad he saved his oracle juice. Has he spotted, though, that hydras are underway? You just gotta like Scarlet's peremptive composition choice here. Carriers can definitely beat hydras, but not cost effectively. And if the hydras mass up sufficiently, they don't beat them at all. M. Canning's making a third Stargate. Scarlet's going for groovy spines for that plus one range. Because you always shoot farther when you're groovy. Oh, is he going to get a second cancel? And he's going to run those adepts back in as well. No, the Hydras chase off the Oracles. And the Lings are going to clean up the adepts. It's a solid defense by Scarlet. Great multitasking. The Hydras are definitely revealed. If they weren't before, they are now. Scarlet knows it. I think she's going to push out. She is still droning insanely behind this. And adding a Lurker Den. That is a tech choice that's somewhat less useful against carriers. M. Canning's walling off his third and adding cannons. He can afford to hold down his base Fort Knox style. You can do that when your entire army can just fly. Lurker Den finishes, and so will those groovy spines. M. Canning's going to start his fourth. The timing may not be great if Scarlet's looking to hit. Oh, but she's got to break down some rocks first. The carrier counts at four with two more on the way. Oh, and he's going to add a robo. Oh, to my shock, those rocks were not able to hold Scarlet back indefinitely. Somehow she found a way to get by them. And here's the attack on the fourth. Zealous warping into the vent. But there's way too much firepower for that to cut it. M. Canning's forced to bust out his four carriers. Scarlet has 20 Hydras to bring to the attack. It's almost one Hydra per interceptor. And we've seen this before. Scarlet likes to go for the interceptors. She doesn't try to focus down the carriers. The carriers get a bunch of Hydra kills, but they're forced to pull back and rebuild their interceptors. It takes nine seconds to build an interceptor. M. Canning can build them four at a time, and he's about to add two more carriers. Scarlet sees the core researching air attack plus two. She gets it. The denied graphic goes up. That's huge. M. Canning is ready to attack again. It's a bloodbath. Hydras are dying, but the interceptors are once again thinning out. Who's got this? Oh, Scarlet is reinforcing with units streaming across the map. It looks like the Hydra Spines are just too groovy for the Interceptors. I'm imagining Austin Powers in the middle of that Hydra pack going, Yeah, baby, groovy! Okay, so an Austin Powers impression is also on the list of things that I cannot do. But I can tell you that M. Canning is in some trouble here. Empty carriers are not going to slow down Scarlet. She's starting to rip into his natural. Scarlet has just supply blocked the Protoss. And she's got 83 drums behind this. Her economy is running at max power. M. Canning's got to find a way to buy time. Three fresh carriers are being made. The stasis wards are helping, but will it be enough? Scarlet's got 26 hydras to bear. It's a concentration of firepower that cannot be denied. The natural is about to be shredded. And the carriers will have to flee to rebuild their interceptors. M. Canning throws in the towel for game one. Scarlet is the winner. A very strong counter composition win for Scarlet. A great scout, a great read, and a great game.
I actually watched a game once where Neeb successfully pulled off a carrier rush on Scarlet. So maybe M. Canning thought he could do something similar here. But Neeb somehow has this magical ability to always bring Scarlet down. Scarlet looked absolutely ready for this. M. Canning's going to have to dig deeper. This is going to be a quick series. I like where his head's at, though. A mid-game timing attack sounds like a good move. He wouldn't want to go that late a game against Scarlet. And she's probably very comfortable with a lot of early game cheese. Let's crank up the next game. But before I forget, I just wanted to do a shout out to Andrew Liang. He posted a first on one of the recent vids on this channel. And in doing so, was the first first our channel has ever had. So, I feel like that deserves some recognition. Thanks, Andrew. And congrats on the first first first. Adjutant, if you would, please. Preparing the pre-parable. The game begins now. Now, I know you've totally forgotten who our players are since it's been so long, so I better tell you again. She's in the Guinness Book of World Records as the world's highest earning female professional gamer. She is Scarlet! <laughs> Her opponent uses more spray paint than Banksy, but his strategy last round could not carry him to victory. He is M. Canning. Game two is always such a big swing game. M. Canning either ties it up or he's out. Let's find out if either of our players are prepared to make an adjustment from game one. M. Canning opens up with the same gate and go that we saw in game one, but there's so many different things he could do from there. Scarlet repeats her hatch first. Last game, she was able to skip the Roach Warren and the Baneling Nest. She texts straight to Hydra's, really to Lurkers. Oh, the Overlord and the Probe are going to say hello in the middle of the map. Those two have always been such class acts. M. Canning's Probe is going to arrive and get confirmation on that hatch first. And back at the Zerg main, Scarlet will follow through on the Extractor Pool. M. Canning's going to note the timing on that too. Either that, or he's just going to empty a spray can in her base. You know, it's this kind of vandalism that really brings down property values in the community. It's a nexus before core for M. Canning once again. Clearly, this means we're going to see another carrier rush. Or not. Cybernetics core goes down, and we'll have to wait for that to complete to get any further insight. Rather, our first clue will come from the Zerg. As the hatch and pool near completion, M. Canning boards that second gas. And if I'm right, he's going to add another pylon so he can stash his tech behind it later. Scarlet's just about done checking the pH levels in her pool. It's open for business, as is the hatch. Two queens, two lings. Precisely as we saw in game one. No deviation. Core completes for Protoss. Scarlet's overlord moves in so she can see. It's a chrono-boosted adept. Last game, N. Canning really kept his initial adept at home, used it defensively. Will he stash his tech as the same place he tried to hide it in game one? There's no overlord to take a peek this time. It is going to be another Stargate. I mean, it's possible he's going for another carrier rush. I mean, it's not probable, but it's still on the table. And once again, Scarlet's satisfied to go ahead and take her third. And once again, M. Canning is following up that adept with a stalker. It does double duty as the door guard slash overlord attacker. Scarlet's halfway on ling speed already. The adept did not attack. The queens are already out. Or at least the initial ones. She's making more. That stalker's like, I know that overlord is there, but for some inexplicable reason, I can't seem to shoot him. But never mind that. The stargate is completing. And it will be a chrono boosted... Void Ray! Awesome! Okay, so that didn't happen in game one, but it could still be a carrier rush. Ling speed is starting to finish up for the Zerg, which seems to be Scarlet's cue to get some Lings out on that map. She wants some intel. I don't think that Void Ray is going to be kept secret for very long, though. My guess is M. Canning really doesn't like Overlords in his base. Let's check and see if the Stargate has a rally point that's been set up for it. Yep. I christen this Void Ray... The first blood hunter. And it's gonna kill steel from that stalker. Poor overlord. Some days it does not pay to get out of bed. Actually, most days. Okay, who am I kidding? All days. But you do what you gotta do. 
Though I'd get up for a cool match like this. M. Canning's added a Twilight Council. That Void Ray totally reminds me of that kid with the magnifying glass who's trying to burn the bug. You know what I'm talking about. You totally knew that kid in elementary school. He had like endless patience and sadism. I'll sit perfectly still for 10 minutes if I can just burn a bug. Scarlet's jumping to Lair Tech just like game one. And we are going to get a really sweet opening warp gate ceremony. I love it when everything lines up perfectly like this. And there's no Ling attack to interrupt it. Dun, 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 dun. And the very first use of those warp gates will be a pair of adepts. But hold the phone, we've got resonating glaives on the way. And three more gates. This looks like a glaive timing. The wrinkle is that M. Canning has concealed it by going for a Stargate first. He wanted Scarlet to see that Void Ray. Maybe she'll dump her money into spores. He's also gone for a third base. So it's not the all-in version of the Glaive attack either. But if he does actually hit with this in the near future, it is a potential concern for Scarlet. Because she doesn't have a Roach Warrant. Oh, she's jumping right to Aspire. We might be looking at three base Muta. Or perhaps she's thinking Corruptors to deal with the Void Rays. So once again, Canning is showing that air attack upgrade at his cyber core. That's going to mask that he's got resonating glaives and that it's finishing up. Scarlet's lings are headed out in the map. Oh, she's going to see the cloud of shades. Wait a second. How many gates does this Protoss have? And she might have been able to pick up on the rapid fire rate that those adepts are sporting right now. Her spire's only halfway done. She's going to make a dozen lings. Lings are not great against the Depths, but it's the only tech she's got available. The Queens are going to have to do the heavy lifting. The first shade is a fake out. The Adepts are going to cut for the natural. Scarlet Speedlings move to block. The next shade is away. It's an azure blue cloud of death. The Lings get the surround, but there's a lot of firepower there. It's five drone kills so far. Scarlet pulls her drones at her main. She's trying to add spine crawlers for defense. The queens arrive, but once again the safety shade is already away. The lings are placed perfectly to catch the shade. But is there enough lings? Eight drone kills. The spire is done now. Muta's in production. The queens move to block off the adept's escape. But you can't stop a shade. Unless you're a supply depot. Those things are the bane of an adept's existence. Twelve drone kills now. Second squad of adept's has arrived. With his shades, M. Canning's able to threaten four locations at a time. This is an extremely demanding defense. Fortunately, the mutas are here now. But they need to clean this up fast before all the drones are gone. 22 drone kills. This has been a very successful attack. There's been no drone pull at the natural. As soon as the mutas get the cleanup at the natural, they immediately head out to counterattack. But M. Canning is already adjusting. He's researching Blink at his Twilight Council and getting Phoenix. He's also adding cannons and shield batteries. Scarlet, interestingly, is dropping a Hydra Den. And to her credit, while her drones were getting slaughtered, she did manage to put down a fourth. Here comes the counter. The Void Ray is there. The cannon is not done. But Scarlet is not interested in any of the defensive units. She wants probes. She needs to even up that worker count. And she sort of has. She was down 20 workers a few seconds ago. She did have to sacrifice her mutas to achieve that though. Only a handful live to limp back to her base. M. Canning definitely has the bigger army, and not only that, while Scarlet is once again researching those groovy spines, M. Canning is adding a robotic support bay. Scarlet sent in her overseer to get an updated intelligence report. Two stalkers warp in to try to take it out. They have Blink now, and they use it. The Overseer is over dead, and there's a small Phoenix Squadron out there to deal with Mutas. M. Canning has everything. Scarlet is adding that infestation pit. My guess is she's trying to get Hive Tech so she can unlock Vipers to complement her Lurkers. Scarlet is so good with Vipers, and she's going to need that to get back in this game. And you can see there, M. Canning's adding a second Robo. And he's even picking up Zealot Leg Speed. He's going to have everything. Oh, this is neat. The Adepts are shading in, but I think they're bait. He wants the Mutas to come out so he can bring his Phoenix to bear. Oh, but Scarlet sees the trap and hides them behind her queens. A great ploy by M. Canning, and an even better reaction by Scarlet. 
M. Canny has decided to go for Colossus. He started the range upgrade, and his first tall boy is on the way. Well, this lone zealot is very dead. Oh my god, the Mutas hit him so hard he turned into a drone. That was a really cool coincidence. I really hope I remember to put that in the replay. Somebody chew me out if I forget, but there's so much going on in this game right now. Colossi on the way, Lurkers on the way. Somehow, some way, Scarlet managed to get a supply lead and an army lead again. How you lose 20 plus drones and come back the following minute is beyond me. A oh, very nice Sim City by M. Canning at his third, and he's putting up a fourth. Scarlet is halfway to Hive. Doesn't that sound like an album cover to you? Halfway to Hive by Garth Brooks. Or maybe Meatloaf. I don't know. Regardless, M. Canning's got himself a pretty nice death ball at this point. It's what I like to call the tomato sauce. He's got a little bit of everything in there. Colossus, Immortal, Void Ray, you name it. What he is missing is Archons, and he's started his battle duck. He's even throwing in a Disruptor. There's no way you can scout and counter his army because you have no idea what it is. You just have to overwhelm it or outmicro it. And the tools that Scarlet has chosen for that job is Hydra Lurker. No Vipers yet. I think that's why she's not moving out. Scarlet has stopped adding to her Mutas. They've sort of become obsolete with her current army. Yeah, I'm just loving that M Canning Death Ball. It's gotta be so hard to micro that. Scarlet is researching adaptive talons. It gives the Lurkers that speed boost, but what it really does, it lets them do that fast burrow. Scarlet's adding a spine crawler at her fourth. Uh oh, the Phoenix are picking up drones. Could this be a precursor to the real attack? Scarlet has 84 drones, by the way. That's pretty staggering when you consider she's lost like 25. M. Canning's death ball remains at home. He's sending out a little mini zealot squad. And apparently one killer zealot to chase away all the lurkers. Who needs armies? Yeah, that's right, I'm talking to you. All you really need is one John Rambo zealot. But in truth, there's a stash of seven zealots hiding to the north. And Scarlet is actually double expanding here. She's got new hatches to both the south and the north. Man, I'm starting to feel like this very sexy death ball is just for defense. Don't you mutas hurt that Ursadon. I love that Ursadon. Oh, I don't think she spotted that zealot hit squad. I'm not sure. If she did, there's no sign. It's starting to look like both players want to max out before they strike. M. Canning is actually going to add a mothership. That's the one thing that could make his death ball cooler. That and Storm, so he's getting that too. Scarlet's about to catch up on attack grades. She's also getting the crackling upgrade. So much for my theory that the hive was all about the vipers. Oh, we've got a zealot loaded warp prism headed to the south side. And the death ball's stepping out onto creep. And the seven samurai zealots are on the move. It's a triple attack. How will Scarlet defend? Everything hits simultaneously just about now. The Lings chase back the Samurai Zealots. The Hydras go to meet the Death Ball. But there's not really anybody to deal with the Warp Prism drop. Oh, there's a follow-up Warp in as well. The Queen gets chased out and the main is undefended. The Zealots are looking to get an upgrade denial. That would be quality revenge for game one. Scarlet's pulled back almost all her lurkers to defend. But she's looking elsewhere. The Zealots are getting free hits on them. She's busy microing against the Death Ball. Oh, M. Canning is getting some damage in here. Scarlet's supply is dropping. And the Zealots have command of her main. The Warp Prism is still there. She has driven back the Death Ball, but it's done some serious damage. M. Canning is maxed. His mothership is out. Scarlet needs to crush this army before it arrives. Oh, Colossus are so good against Hydras. So are Disruptor Blasts. Remember how I said this Death Ball couldn't be microed? Well, he's doing it. Scarlet has lost 39 drones. She's just started a wave of 25 new ones. Oh, the Zealots are gonna deny that ranged attack upgrade. Missile attack level three is officially denied. And the Death Ball is pushing in again. This time at the southernmost base. The Warp Prism's finally been cleaned up. The drone kill total is at 43. And what's astounding is that Scarlet has 72 left. Scarlet's clearly researched that upgrade where you make drones twice as fast as anybody else. Oh, the Zealots got the Spire! Now they're going to work on the Lurker Den! Scarlet's tech is just getting hollowed out! She is now fighting for her life! 
Meanwhile, M. Canning is filling out his tech tree with all his wish lists. He started a dark shrine. He already has a fleet beacon. His first carrier is already here. See, I told you this was a carrier rush. I was just 10 minutes early, because I'm that good. Scarlet's starting up a new lurker den at a new location. And she's cranking out hydras to get some semblance of an army. Meanwhile, M. Canning has expanded to the south, and he's adding a ton of shield batteries and cannons. He does not plan to be dislodged easily. It's like, I know Scarlet's gonna win this game, but I'm not sure how anymore. She's still got an economy, but she's gonna be facing the uppermost regions of the Protoss tech tree, and she's gonna do it without any air. Okay, as soon as I say that, she goes and replaces her spire, okay. Oh, M. Canning just blew up his own disruptor to make room for supply. Usually they like, kill a couple of probes. That's like a supervillain eliminating one of his major henchmen. No, Dr. Canning, I'm sorry. You failed me for the last time, Colossi. I'm replacing you with carriers, which also failed me in a previous episode. But that's not the point. The point is, M. Canning setting up for another multi-pronged attack again. We've got zealots hidden to the south. Stalkers lurking to the north. Scarlet swings south. She's able to defend efficiently so far. But is she being dragged out of position? Deathball 2.0 is moving out. It's even bigger, even badder, and more invisible than ever before. Scarlet swings north to deal with the stalkers. They blink away. And I think that blink is intended to lure Scarlet into Deathball 2.0. It is. The Hydras realize their mistake. They're on the run. They narrowly dodge that disruptor shot. What a diverse piece of firepower this is. Scarlet decides to add a second spire. She realizes she needs her air upgrades yesterday. Oh, Dark Templar raised the south hatch to the ground. They've got the Shadow Strike upgrade now. Oh, and there's Templar feedbacking Scarlet's Vipers. Oh, Storms and feedbacks. How is he microwing that army? That was sensational. The Vipers are so important to what Scarlet's trying to do right now. She needs to abduct and isolate those expensive units for her Hydras to take them down. I'm not sure, but I think she's just lost like all her energy. M. Canning gets another hatch, and I think he's going to get the Hydra Den. He does. It's unopposed. Scarlet's busy cannibalizing her own building so she can recharge up her Vipers. Oh, disruptor shots away. Boom. Unmoving lurkers exploding into the air. And then a timely pullback by M. Canning. He is completely maxed and looking very dominant right now. Scarlet was clearly hoping her stellar Viper play could get her back into this but it was anticipated and neutralized. Yet another matchup in which Battle Duck has proven to be pivotal. When I look at the units tab, I see that M. Canning is actually rocking 14 different types of units at once. And he's now researching the Protoss shield upgrade. Oh, and there's still a DT inside the Zerg base. It's wrecking havoc on the long distance mining drones. Scarlet has requested a pause and it has been granted, but we won't see it on our replay once again. Whoa, that's a lot of Hydras. They're really going to deal with that DT. There's now six carriers beefing up that Death Ball. Maybe we'll call that Death Ball 3.0. And I'm pretty sure they have their interceptors. M. Canning's going to claim another base. He's got the bank to throw down the static defense to defend it. But forget that. It looks like we've got another Death Ball incursion. Scarlet's about to finish plus three missile attack, but she's only got 16 Hydras to wield it. The Vipers are getting into position. They've got to dodge the feedbacks this time. A trio of Zealots rush in to test the Zerg defenses. Once again, there's a separate Stalker force with the simultaneous attack. Scarlet needs to snipe that mothership. It's a move we've seen her pull off many times before. Ah, her Corruptors are here. Has M. Canning waited too long? Has he let Scarlet get back in this? Or has he built an ultimate army? Scarlet is once again bleeding drones. Here comes the attack with the main force. Scarlet abducts a disruptor. The feedbacks! It's a double time warp. The interceptors are not affected by the time warp. Scarlet grabs three carriers, but she doesn't have the juice to kill them. The protective embrace of the mothership. Storms cover the death ball's retreat. M. Canning is firing off every spell in the game. The corruptors are working down the interceptors, but that lets the void ray go to work. So do the storms. 
That death ball is proving to be one tough nut to crack. Scarlet gets the mothership, that's big. But is it too late? The carriers are on top of her army. The corruptors are looking like the colors of the fall. There's seven carriers out there, and some of them have all their interceptors. Scarlet surrenders the south base to the Zerg. She loses the Viper, and it's GG! M. Canning ties the series up! What an impressive performance by our Protoss player! This will now have to be decided in a third and final game. But first, before I forget, I just want to make sure my eyes did not deceive me. Apparently, in the latest patch, Muta somehow gained the power to turn Zealots into drones. I'm kidding, of course. This was an extreme coincidence of timing. If you look at the clip, the drone hatches the exact moment the Zealot died and the Zealot was covering the egg. But permit me to geek out here, because that was really cool. Next, I do want to say something about Game 2, and it's this. Try defending a Glaive Rush without roaches sometime. As a starting point, remember that Adepts do extra damage against the Light type, and that includes Lings and Drones. I love that M. Canning hid the Glaive Rush by opening with the Starport. We'll never know for certain, but we might even credit him with building off his rush in Game 1 so that it looked like he was trying another Stargate rush. He revealed the Void Ray, and then he showed the same upgrade at the Cyber Core. Very cunning. The net result was Scarlet did not have a Roach Warren ready. As good as she was with her Queens, the damage was still immense. A lesser player would have died outright to that. From there, M. Canning has a big lead. Remarkably, Scarlet rebuilds her economy. You probably heard me criticizing, or at least questioning M. Canning, for not pressing the attack and snuffing out Scarlet while he had the supply lead. But I was wrong. He wasn't sitting around twiddling his thumbs at all. He was teching hard and maintaining his advantage throughout the game. So while it looked like he let Scarlet back into the game, not once but twice, that's only if you consider supply numbers. If you factor in composition changes and tech investments, M. Canning was staying ahead and waiting for what he considered to be the best moment to attack. Maybe he could have finished Scarlet early. Or maybe he knew to wait for the moment that he was most comfortable with. All we know is that it worked for him. I'll also mention it one last time, because I think I gushed about this enough during the game. The more varied your Protoss death ball is, the more immune it becomes to soft countering by a Zerg composition. And as we know, Zerg, more so than any other race, is really good at changing its composition on a dime. This is because of its centralized production at the hatchery. It's one of Zerg's best weapons. So a very death ball is awesome. But the trade-off is, it's much harder to control in micro. I wouldn't normally recommend this to anyone. But M. Canning makes it look like a no-brainer. He hits every feedback while dropping storms and shooting controlled Nova Beams. He even throws in a couple time warps. That was some great micro control. Just wow! Especially when you consider, for much of the game, he didn't just have a death ball to control. He also had attacking control groups to the north and to the south. Well, that takes us to game three. I feel like it's going to be up to Scarlet to adjust, and I can't wait to see it. Adjutant, if you would please. Warning. Suspense levels beyond recommended capacity. The game begins now. Well, since I have it on good authority that you all have retrograde amnesia, I'd better once again review who our players are. If you want to master the ancient art of food preservation, you need to be up on your canning! If you haven't noticed from this series yet, M. Canning is particularly famous for a skill with the Disruptor. Specifically the part that goes boom. She's the only player to ever win a tournament sanctioned by the International Olympic Committee. She is Scarlet! If you think you're as excited for this tiebreaker as I am, then you have limited insight into your own character. Cause I'm pretty stoked. Though, we might have to wait a little bit before this game really gets going. We could be looking at a repeat of the same openings that we saw in Game 1 and Game 2. 
Though this game should have a character all of its own, because this time we're playing it out on Eternal Empire. M. Canning's probe did not take the direct route. Looks like he's snuck in a little bit of proxy checking on his way. Still sticking to her hatch first build. Scarlet's gonna grab her gas and pool. Whoa! No, no, it's a fake cannon rush. There's no forge. Will Scarlet take the bait? She dispatches a single drone. She's gonna follow him to the low ground. Is he gonna let that pylon complete? No, M. Canning aborts. This is my fault, really, for suggesting the players might actually open up the same way. Well, some things never change. Canning's gonna smear the spray paint on Scarlet's mane once again. M. Canning might be 25 minerals behind than usual, but he's still gone Nexus before core. And he's gonna tuck his tech stashing pylon behind his mane once again. Will it be a third Stargate once again? But even if it is, we can't really read into it because of game two. His opening tech choice was a fake out. Hatch and pool complete. No deviation for Scarlet. Two queens, two lings, three games in a row. Cybercore is gonna finish up for Protoss. The Overlord is timed out to get a peek at it. Will there be action at the gate? Yes, Chrono Boost is adept. I love it, the Overlord flips back to look at the camera. Seriously, again with the adept. And now all eyes are on the tech stashing pylon behind the main. Oh, I totally missed where it was gonna go. But it is another Stargate. I just don't know what it means. But could we actually see carriers three games in a row? Could I be that lucky? M. Canning's adept heads out, but I do not expect it to harass. It's either cowardly or cautious, depending on your point of view. He likes to keep it safe at home to avoid any shenanigans from Lings. I bet Scarlet's just fine with that. It lets her drone up even more. She does go ahead with that Ling speed. And M. Canning fires up the warp gates. The Stargate is gonna finish. And when it does, maybe we'll get some insight into what Protoss has planned for us. Everyone place your bets. It's a Void Ray. The Void Ray turned out to be an important piece for M. Canning in game two. I think we might be able to nickname him First Blood Hunter once again. Scarlet's Overlord's gonna see that second gate being added, but that might be the last thing she gets to see with that Overlord. What does she do with that information, though? Oh, you made a Void Ray. I guess I know there's gonna be a Glaive timing. M. Canning's Adept grabs the Watchtower. She's gotta do something to make herself useful. Oh, the Void Ray is out. The hunt for the first blood begins. You know what I don't get about the Void Ray? It has a range of six, but if the target retreats, its range increases to eight. I mean, what's the physics behind that? Why would your spaceship's attack range depend on what your opponent does? Whoa, Scarlet canceled the spore there. I obviously can't tell you what Scarlet's thinking, but I can tell you what it looked like. She sees a Void Ray, instant reflex, she makes a spore. Then she remembers in game two it was a fake out, so she cancels it. Only this time, M. Canning's making an Oracle. That spore might have been quite useful. M. Canning's really playing a good rock, scissors, paper game here. He's trying to stay one step ahead by taking into account the information he's previously showed his opponent. Yeah, that Oracle's going out for a traditional drone raid. And look at this. This time, Scarlet's making the Roach Warren, which is exactly what she needed in game two. She has no intention of falling for the same trick twice. But it's a different trick. I love it. He's also getting his third up, by the way. Scarlet's Ling saw that. She's also going to see the Oracle with her Overlord, but not with a lot of lead time. The Queen is not yet in position. Pulsar beams are active. Scarlet with the drone pull. But she doesn't get them all. Three drone kills, but the shields are gone. Make it four. There's two queens in position, but M. Canning swerves to the natural. There's no queens there. Scarlet's trying to remake that spore. Oh, he's getting more. Eight kills. M. Canning doing material damage, nine. And then he gets out of there and saves the Oracle. He's gotta be happy with that. And behind it, he's managed to make a Forge and a Twilight Council. That is as good an opening as he can hope for. Scarlet did manage to finish her lair, though. She's going to use it to start up Roach Speed. Look at that. There's no Adepts for Protoss this time. It's all sentries so far. But he is adding gates. What's so amazing is that Scarlet is actually up 10 workers at this point. I mean, didn't she just lose 9? 
She's also producing an infestation pit. Is she planning to jump to Hive Tech? Or perhaps add in some infestors? M. Canning's adding the Zealot Leg Upgrade and plus one attack. Looking at his number of gates, he might be looking to brute force this. That was a Nidus Network for Scarlet. Oh, can I get a hell yeah! M. Canning's adding even more gates, but also a Templar Archive. Scarlet's banking money, and she's waiting for that infestation pit to finish. I think we're going to be seeing the mushroom men. Scarlet just started up seven swarm hosts. I think M. Canning made her angry. This is something she does when she really wants to punk Protoss. Well, I hope M. Canning enjoyed having expansions. Because I'm not so sure he's going to get to keep them. Though, adding in shield batteries and cannons is a pretty good start. You know what? I think I take that back. Really, we've seen mobility is the key to countering a swarm host. The first Nidus Worm is planted. But that is a pretty ambitious location. The Void Ray is right on top of that. Even if it manages to finish, it won't last long. Oh! Oh, well, that was kind of perfect. We got to see it emerge and see the death animation. I feel like the players did that just for me. Worm number two is on the field. M. Canning goes hunting. Will he find it? Does he have sufficient map vision that he can track them down before they can pop up? No, worm number two is going to complete. The muffin top men arrive. But they look kind of bottled up there. There seems to be a bit of an internal disagreement over the order of operations here. And M. Canning finds them before they can get set. Scarlet's forced to expend half her locusts in self-defense. M. Canning's going to wisely pull back. No, he's not. He's going to face the locusts anyway. That seemed rather unnecessary. The roaches and lings are the follow-up, but they're really the distraction. The swarm hosts are getting up to the base. The second half of Scarlet's locusts are going to hit the third. M. Canning with the overcharge. The shield battery is going to keep the probes alive while the Archon can deal with the Locusts. That was a fantastic defense. The Archon has that splash and that damage bonus against Biological. But the beauty of the Swarm Host is that a failed attempt costs Scarlet nothing. She's going to pop up another worm and have an alternate location to attack from. M. Canning is retaliating. A lone zealot looks to focus down a hatchery. This time, Scarlet sends a much larger wave of locusts. But the sentries with the shields and the stasis ward. It's another terrific defense by the Protoss. Scarlet did clean up that zealot, no surprise there. And the swarm host is not the only weapon that she's wielding. The ravagers look to break into the natural. But the swarm host pull back. They're going to relocate, but possibly not all that far. Now that's just the definition of lazy. That worm's like 10 feet away from the last one. The swarm hosts have to do some walking. No wonder swarm hosts have such high BMI. You gotta get some fitness in there, Zerg. Don't just ride the Nidus network all day. You know, in my day, Zerg didn't even have Nidus worms. If you wanted to get somewhere, you had to walk on your own two tentacles. Peel both ways and there were Protoss there to attack you. Well, I guess some things never change. M. Canning's not giving Scarlet an inch here. He's really showing the value of the Nexus Overcharge. But the attacks are taking their toll. Scarlet's near max. He's got a much bigger army. She can afford to attack while her swarm hosts reload. M. Canning does have the upgrade advantage, though. And he's got that Archon Immortal combo that's so deadly. And Mummy! Don't forget that Mummy's here. The Mothership can be a great deterrent to Locusts. But only if he can force that Overseer back. Or better yet, kill it off with a Void Ray. He snipes it. Scarlet has to pull back. She's got no detection. That's M. Canning's original Void Ray, by the way. That's one of the very first units he made in this game. His Void Ray had MVP potential last game. I wonder if this will be the same. Scarlet gets off a really big wave of Locusts this time. There's only a single cannon there for defense. It's one Nexus versus 22 Locusts. Oh, we are going to get ourselves a visual here. Oh yeah! That went down so fast. The impact is immediate. Scarlet is now mining a thousand more minerals per minute than her opponent. But M. Canning is going to get revenge zealot style. He gets Scarlet's fourth. Oh, come on. That worm's so close it can shake hands with the last one. M. Canning slipped into Warp Prism. He's escaping with the zealot payload.
Scarlet's transition to Hydra's. Extremely useful for softening up Zealots. M Canning Zealots are going after the fifth now. And his main army is confident enough to push out. Once again, he's hitting Scarlet in every base imaginable. He means to stretch her defense until it breaks. And his cloaked immortal sentry is the device that intends to do the breaking. Oh man, we gotta figure out how many kills that Void Ray has. Though Nidus Worm is technically a structure, so that's not gonna count. And speaking of dying structures, Protoss is gonna snipe the fifth. But Scarlet has Vipers now. She wants that mothership. She gets it. M Canning with the recall. Can you imagine the nightmares that you would have being frozen in a recall while locusts are devouring your flesh? You might live, but we're talking like a hundred years of therapy to come back from that. It's a good thing Zealots are a long-lived race. We are going to have three games of carriers in a row. M Canning expands to a fourth base, but since he lost his natural, he's really only got three. Scarlet also has bases to remake. She's near max again, though. You'd never know that she just had the boots taken to her. For a brief moment, neither player is attacking. M. Canning's remaking his mothership. Scarlet's starting up a spire. But I don't think she wants her swarm host sitting around. She's starting up another Nidus worm. Her creep stretches so far, she can just plant those worms with ease. M. Canning's gonna spot this one in time. Even if it finishes, she's not gonna want to use it. Scarlet starts up another worm, but it's ultra conservative. She doesn't really have the vision on the right hand side to do anything else. She also doesn't have any numeric upgrades, by the way. So her max army isn't quite as terrifying as it seems. Also unusual is that M Canning actually has the worker lead here. Oh, there's that stellar Viper play that we know and love. Oh, great storm by Protoss to ward off the Zerg to save the carrier. M Canning gets tired of tripping over all the changelings. He destroys them all. Scarlet has a ton of overseers with her. She is going to be so ready for that mothership cloak. And she's adding a second spire as well. I think she's getting ready to transition to the air war. Locusts away again. But they've been sent to the natural. That area is a little bit target poor. Nope, M Canning's trying to get up another nexus. Scarlet's going to be able to take that down. Oh, we did get the cancel. That's not easy to do. Those locusts move quick. And now they're going to slake their vengeance by taking down a pair of critical pylons. And then they're going to smear their guts all over the Protoss floor. That is so rude, man. I mean, have the decency to show yourself out. But I guess when you have the life expectancy of a fruit fly, you never really learn manners. Poor role modeling, that's what I say. So the battle's raging on here. M Canning is using the time to gradually catch up on supply. Scarlet's using the time to gradually catch up on upgrades. They just might wind up meeting in the middle with fully operational armies. M Canning's up 12 workers, but it's Scarlet who's actually pulling in more resources. Oh, and she's going for a second mothership. Oh, that storm was fantastic. Hydra's just melt a storm. M Canning knows it, and that's why he's adding even more Templar. He's really got a little bit of everything in his army. Once again, it's a really impressive piece of pasta sauce. Much of Scarlet's supply is tied up in her 20 swarm hosts. Though it certainly won't look like it's tied up if she can get another big Nexus kill. M. Canning has done a fabulous job, though, of depopulating the Nidus Worms. Scarlet is getting positioned over that natural once again. And she's unburrowing a worm back at the Protoss third. Unfortunately, it's going to get spotted. M. Canning cancels his Nexus before this worm host even arrive. I really like this. The natural is the one location that Scarlet consistently has control over. He should just let it go and rebuild elsewhere. She can have the unpowered robo. The swarm host head home. They're not too pleased with themselves. The Protoss Pasta Sauce is here to launch a counterattack. Feedbacks on the Vipers and Storms. That was a great little snipe. Scarlet's got her corruptors up now. He does not want Locust with energy pulling his mothership into the pack. Oh, these kamikaze zealots are worthy of Neeb. Whoops, Scarlet had to pull her army away. That's going to cost her a hatchery. Those zealots cannot believe how lucky they are. They're about to be torn apart by the Hydras and the Hydras has walked away. M. Canning's going to add in a Dark Shrine. Scarlet's going to hatch some Lurkers. The Lurkers didn't add their usual value in Game 2. We'll see if they have the same problem this time around. 15 kills on that Hero Void Ray. It's been hanging around a long time. And the Pasta Sauce Death Ball Army 
is going to help M. Canning get up a third base at a new location. Scarlet's planting a bit of a spore forest at her forward base location. And the bitter vipers are recharging after their unfortunate session of feedback. M. Canning just caught up on the air attack upgrade. Though Scarlet will neutralize that when she gets the plus one flyer carapace. M. Canning's actually going to go for the plus one shields again. It's expensive, but it helps out virtually every unit in your army. And M. Canning has one diverse army. Both our players are maxed, which is why we see them filling out all the more obscure upgrades. Neither player wants to fall behind in their spending. Speaking of moolah though, M. Canning's actually pulling in more money than Scarlet at this point. Oh, here's Nidus Worm number 17. I'm not sure that one's gonna get up either. Nidus Worms aren't that cheap either. 75 minerals, 75 gas. You know what? We've had so much back and forth at this point, it's been crazy. And we've got double maxed armies. At this point, I gotta start to wonder, could we have ourselves a Crimson Zone game? We've got a long ways to go yet, but I'm starting to feel the potential. We're about to have another big clash. Oh no, the Hero Void Ray. Scarlet finally got his original Stargate unit. And she snacks on another carrier. I love it when she does that. You know, I've noticed something. M. Canning has just about every kind of unit in his army right now, but what he does not have is the Disruptor. And of course, that's the unit I claim that M. Canning was famous for. Just another way that these players like to stick it to me. And to each other. There's another hatch going down for Scarlet. And more feedbacks on the Vipers. This is really coming down to that Templar versus Viper dynamic. Both Storm and Abduct have a range of 9, so there's no inherent advantage there. But Feedback has a range of 10. Oh, DT's in the main. He's looking to shut down the Spires. Scarlet needs her Overseers over there ASAP. Additional Zealots getting warped in. Are there enough Hydras? Both the Spires go down. Here now, but they're too late. Scarlet gets the cleanup, but she's too late. Fortunately, she did start a backup Spire. There shouldn't be too big a lull in her Corruptor production. And she's gonna need them, because M. Canning is gradually shifting to more and more carriers. Those Interceptors are really starting to look like a swarm of bees. Or maybe a swarm of Amazon delivery drones that all have the same address. Free shipping to 111 Eternal Empire. You know, as I look at this, if you subtract out the 60 supply that Scarlet has tied up in swarm hosts, Every Swarm Host is 3 Supply, and then every Lurker is 3 Supply as well. So that's another 27 Supply. An extremely small portion of her army can actually shoot up to attack the carriers. That's going to start to become a problem for her. Of course, as soon as I try to expouse on this, the Swarm Hosts go and take down another Nexus. But my point is they have to be on the far side of the map attacking, because their defensive value now is really little. Protoss is making a compositional adjustment and Zerg has to stay with it. I just love the games that have so much back and forth that these incremental changes can really start to make a difference. Oh, the Dark Templar have shut down Nidus Worm 29 and 30. And Scarlet's trying to get Mothership number 3. She gets it. Shouldn't the broken pieces of the Mothership just like fall all over the carrier army? It's kind of convenient that the Mothership just evaporates. Maybe the Protoss or the installed a self-destruct disintegration button just to protect the rest of their army. In any event, M. Canning is now pulling back. He started making another mothership. Scarlet started up Nidus Worm number 407. It's a really good position if she can actually get it up. Zealots are looking to take it down. High Templar getting in there. It's the rare Psy Blast. It does a mighty four points of damage. I feel like the High Templar need to go talk to the Adepts and figure out how it is that they're able to shoot blasts that are like 2.5 times is awesome. Scarlet's lost another hatch. Her economy's starting to sputter a little bit. Here come her corruptors. Oh, and she's looking to pounce on top of the carriers. M. Canning has to drop storms on his own position. Scarlet thins out those carrier numbers, but her corruptors are badly hurt. That was a big exchange. Both of the armies of our two titans are in shambles right now. Who can recover faster here? M. Canning's pulling in twice the number of minerals. He's ordering more carriers, another mothership, and more DTs. Scarlet's looking to rebuild her hatches and finish her upgrades. Oh, M. Canning circled back. He's not waiting to rebuild. He's got more storms to drop. The Hydras are gone. That hatch is not going up. 
The High Templar are like, what are you talking about? Our side blasts are awesome. Didn't you see me one shot that hatch? Oh, this could be big for Scarlet. She needs this. She's got her swarm host into position over two different Protoss next side. Oh, but the overcharge is going to protect the one to the right. She's going to get the one to the left. Neither of those bases were particularly fresh, though. Scarlet did get the retreat, though. And she doesn't particularly care if that Dark Templar closes the door behind her. This is the fresh Nexus that's generating M Canning's money. And Scarlet's going at it. There's a worm halfway done. That will give her position. M Canning's army looks like it senses something is wrong. Meanwhile, Scarlet's air army's gonna guard her hatch. She needs that up desperately. Here come the mushroom men. Their attack has never been more important. They are fully loaded. There's only two cannons there. Here comes the big one. M Canning with a warp in and a recall. The mothership arrives to cloak the base at the last moment. There's no overseer to grant the locust vision. They're just hanging around drinking coffee. They're gossiping as they watch each other explode. I did not see that defense coming. That was huge. The DTs are not going to let Scarlet get another wave off. M. Canning's adding back in Void Rays. That's a great choice because Corruptors are armored. And when you turn on Prismatic Alignment, you get a huge damage bonus against armored. Those Void Rays are going to bring some very high DPS to the table. Scarlet is showing signs of recovering her economy, but she's down on army supply now. I do like that she's adding in Infestors. Now that M Canning looks to be going full Golden Armada, Fungal Gross can be very effective against that. I'm less enthused about another attack on the natural. Well, sniping and upgrading Cyber Core is a pretty big deal, and the effort costs are absolutely nothing, so I take it back. It's just that M Canning's maxed. She really wants to keep him back at home defending, but instead he's going to go after those hatches she just finally rebuilt. Oh, a storm on the drones! Can Scarlet get Mothership number four? Yes, she can! I can just hear High Commanded Ire. We're not going to warp it anymore if you can't keep them alive. But that is not what they're saying, because M Canning is indeed starting up another one. Oh, the Mushroom Men are back home to defend, but I'm not so sure what they'll be able to do here. Oh, there goes Scarlet's last hatch. Her income's gone. She's down to 26 workers. Scarlet hits the fungal. She needs that. But it's not enough. The Void Rays are going to town. Scarlet has stopped making units. I think her fingers might be hovering over the GG key. There it is. M. Canning has won. He won the series against Scarlet. So impressive. Dude, that was some good StarCraft. Fun fact though, it was not, repeat, not a Crimson Zone game. It was 15 kills short. There was 485 deaths in that game. It felt like a Crimson Zone game though, didn't it? I think this game turned on M. Canning's defense of the Swarm Host. Scarlet made a big and sustained commitment to the Swarm Host, and she couldn't get enough value out of it. It left her army weaker over time. It's hard to criticize somebody for making Swarm Hosts. Especially Scarlet, because she's pretty good with them. But Nexus Overcharge has given Protoss another arrow in their quiver to defend that attack. And as we saw, Recall plus Mothership works pretty well too. So what I want to leave you with is the celebratory photos I dug up. This is M. Canning in the moment he sees GG in that final game. That is a dude who's earned himself a genuine smile. He looks like he really needs someone to high-five him there. Curse you, COVID, for not giving this man the crowd he deserved. So please remember to live life because nobody wants to die in hold position. To continue your StarCraft journey, Nova advises you to click the video in the upper rectangle. But Kerrigan warns you to watch your six and click the video in the bottom rectangle. Or you can stimpack your StarCraft experience. Subscribe to Zugzwang StarCraft. Just hit the circle. From my base to yours, Zugzwang out.